And we have had first motion of the Space Shuttle Discovery, and it's now uh, 10 minutes till 1 a.m. The Space Shuttle Discovery has begun its journey to the launch pad. Its next trip is into space. It will take the shuttle Discovery approximately six to seven hours to complete the 4.2 mile trip to launch pad 39B. And uh, afterwards the space shuttle will be um, taken up to launch pad 39B and a minimum amount of work will be completed, and uh, which includes putting the orbiter access arm into position near Discovery's crew hatch and uh, putting the external tank, inner tank access arm into its position and rotating the uh, rotating service structure around uh, to the Space Shuttle Discovery's uh, payload bay. And the official time for first motion is uh, 12.50 p.m. Eastern Time. This concludes the commentary for tonight's uh, rollout We'll be standing by for a ceremony with uh, General McCartney, the center director here at Kennedy Space Center, and mission specialist for the STS-26 flight, uh, David Helmers. This is Shuttle Control. Well, it's a little later than we anticipated getting it started, but a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's so great to have you all out tonight, and I sincerely appreciate you coming out to see what I think is a magnificent sight, and I think you'll agree with me on that, won't you? You know, I just thought it was most fitting that we have some way of uh, all getting together in some central spot for those who wanted to come out tonight to take uh, part in what is obviously a major undertaking in getting back to flying. It's been a long two and a half years since the Challenger, and I am very pleased with the progress we've made during that time period. I think that that's come about, as, as uh, you and I know, by a lot of hard work over many, many uh, long, long months by an awful lot of the team. And I'd like to emphasize to you that it has been a team effort, not only here at Kennedy, but of course with the team, team members at Marshall as well as Johnson and their contractors. But this is what it's all about, getting ready to go to the pad and getting ready to fly. I'm sure each of you must have had different thoughts in mind, just as, as all of us did on this great night when indeed Discovery rolled out. I think it would be most appropriate if we asked some of the people here tonight to share their thoughts with us. And I think I'd first like to ask Tom Utzman if he would come up. Tom, as you know, is the deputy uh, center director as well as, as he's really ramrodded this for a long time to get us back flying again. So Tom, why don't you come up and share a few thoughts with us on what you were thinking. Tom, Tom Utzman. Well, I, it is a beautiful sight. And I'd like to say, you know, there's a lot of talk. There's a, there's a lot of differences in the bird, Dave. As you know, it's been made better. We've changed a lot of our procedures, and we've changed the way we've done business. But one thing that hasn't changed has been the spirit and dedication of the workers here at KSC. And I think what we see tonight is a tribute to them. And I really, really feel very good about that. Now, Dave, what we've got is a good bird for you. We're going to take it out to the pad. We're going to gas it up and give it a little 20-second run. And then you're going to take it on a big ride that's going to be for you and for all of us come here later in the summer. And we're very, very proud to have it going. And we at Kennedy really appreciate this time. And it's, it's like a culmination of a long time. And I'm very happy. And I know I'm happy for everybody here. Thank you.
you're right, Tom. A lot of things have changed, but the enthusiasm hasn't. You know, one of the most enthusiastic people I've seen around is Bob Seek, who's the launch director. Bob, won't you come up and share your thoughts with us? Well, thank you. The, the milestone that we're going through now, of course, represents a lot of hard work by a lot of dedicated people. And uh, it's not over yet. There's still a lot to do. This, uh, this particular trip to the launch pad would appear to be fairly slow. And maybe looking back at, over the past couple of years, everything that we've done would, would appear to be slow. But, but we're being careful. We want to make sure what we do is correct and plan it before we go ahead. Uh, this, this last trip that the shuttle makes to the pad will probably be the slowest. The next one's going to be real quick. The time between now and then is going to, going to go quickly, and I'm sure you're all looking forward to that as the team is. Thank you. One of the uh, assignments that uh, some of the astronauts have is to uh, follow the di different birds. Uh, uh, and as you know, they're numbered. And this happens to be OV-103. Ken Cameron is the astronaut that's been signed and has been uh, assigned to Kennedy to follow the progress of uh, Vehicle 103 Discovery during its uh, uh, modification and preparation for flight. So I think it'd be most appropriate if we heard from Ken to see what he's thinking tonight. Ken, would you come up and share your thoughts with us? Thank you, General. Thank you. I've been very fortunate for the past 18 months to be down here at Kennedy for uh, most of my working assignment with the office. And I've been over in the OPF and the VAB uh, watching the transformation that has taken place on Discovery and watching also the transformation in, in morale and spirit that has taken place here at Kennedy Space Center as we prepared for this day. I think uh, it's a real time of celebration both for the country on the 4th of July and for the team here at uh, Kennedy Space Center that has made this event possible. I am down here quite routinely representing the astronaut, astronaut office in general, and I'm very proud to thank you members of the Kennedy launch team and processing team for making this event possible. We've got a, got a tremendous asset in this bird here behind me, but the real, the real national resource is the team here at KSC that has made this possible and makes it possible for us to explore. Thank you very much from myself and from the astronaut office. You know, one of the major changes that was made uh, in the way we run things is to try to get full-time representation down here by, uh, by the uh, uh, upper levels of managers and representing uh, the uh, Washington management level is uh, uh, Captain Bob Crippen, who, as you know, he and John Young flew on the uh, first SDS. I would imagine that uh, as it rolls out, Crip must have a lot of interesting thoughts in his mind relative to how he views this versus the uh, SDS-1, which I understand was a much colder, colder morning than uh, early morning than it is that. So, Crip, why don't you come up and tell us what's on your mind in this momentous occasion when we return to flight? Thank you, General McCartney. This is what I call a happy Fourth of July. This is a proud day. It's a proud day for the Kennedy Space Center. It's a proud day for the National Space Transportation System. It's a proud day for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And it's a proud day for the United States of America. And I'm proud of each and every one of you playing across America that made this happen. And those of you that did make it happen have every right to be proud of this magnificent flying machine behind me. You did us, you did us well. We appreciate it, thank you. I think it's been said before that we all believe that this is one of the finest prepared orbiters that's ever left here. As a matter of fact, we spent a lot of extra time making sure that everything on it 
was just right. And you know, uh, the spirit of all of us was that we would like to go along on the flight too, but of course that isn't possible. So Mr. John Archibald here, uh, one of the employees here, had a thought that it would be perhaps appropriate that uh, we all should sign a book and maybe ask the crew to take the book with us so that they would understand that although we couldn't be with them in orbit, that we would in fact be with them in spirit. And John, we certainly do appreciate you. Won't you stand and be recognized, John? Thank you so much. Thanks, John. I know when John came up with the idea, I was very enthusiastic about it. And when he brought it up to the office, I was very pleased to put my name on the list. And I can't think of a better thing to do than to ask one of the crew members, uh, Dave Hilmers, if he'll come up here and accept this book. Dave, won't you come on up? <laughs> Dave, I don't want to drop this because what this is is a a, a book that has the inscription on it, the KSC team is with you, and it has the signatures of over 15,000 members of the team here who thought enough to tell you that we have put together a fine machine for you. We want you to take this with us, with you in orbit, and although we can't be with you there in spirit, you know we are, and Dave, it's with a, a great amount of pride that I ask you to take this with you on your trip. Okay. Thank you very much, General. For over two years now, each one of us here tonight has had a dream that one day a shuttle would once again make its way to the launch pad to launch Americans into space. For over two years, each one of you and thousands of others who could not be here tonight have labored with an incredible intensity to make that dream a reality. It is those of you who have written your name into this book, who have made this splendid, magnificent sight that we behold tonight possible. Because of, because of your hard work and your diligence, those of us who are going to fly on the flight of STS-26 know that our journey into space will be a safe one. What an incredible privilege it is for those of us who are on the crew to be entrusted with this magnificent machine. We pledge to you tonight that we will strive with every ounce of our devotion and every ounce of our strength to successfully complete the flight that you have already begun. You have already started that mission. We'll be taking a part of each one of you with us when we make that flight. But tonight, you haven't given this book or this shuttle just to the five members of our crew. Indeed, you've given it to all America. It's the mark of a great nation, of its greatness, that it can rise again from adversity and with discovery, rise again we shall. What more fitting present could we make to our country than this on the day of its birth? America, the dream is still alive. Thank you. Dave, I think that's exactly the, the uh, thoughts of, uh, of all of us today. It's so great to be an American. It's a great day for our country. It is a great gift, I think, that everyone is making to our country. And I don't know about y'all, but it certainly does me good to look back there and see the United States written on the side of Discovery on the way to the pad with the United States of America flag flying on it. This is the greatest country in the world, and we're the most fortunate people to be able to call ourselves citizens of this great country, and we should never, ever forget it. I think it would be most appropriate at this time if we would all rise for the playing of the Star Spangled Banner.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the uh, brief ceremony that we had. I can only say to you, thank you ever so much again for coming out and being a part of this event. Thank you for all your contributions, and thank you for, uh, for coming and, and being a part of getting America back in space again. God bless you, and God bless our country.